All right. Welcome everybody to PALS. Uh, today's speaker is uh, Kolech Tonan from uh, Khalifa University in Abu Dhabi, and he'll talk about clonoids of Boolean functions. Please, Yako. Thank you, Peter, for this uh, kind invitation to present my work in the seminar. Um, so let's uh, start with the basics. Uh, so um, much of my work uh, deals with the composition of the functions. Uh, this is the usual way how uh, the composition of uh, um, functions with multiple arguments is defined. Uh, uh, but this uh, definition of functional composition uh, can be extended uh, to function classes. So we define the composition of two sets of functions. So if f is a set of functions from b to c and g is a set of functions from a to b, the composition of the two sets of functions is defined as the set of all compositions of functions where the outer function comes from the first class and all the inner functions come from the second class. And using this uh, um, concept uh, of function class composition, we can easily uh, speak of certain interesting uh, concepts or properties of uh, function classes. For example, we can define that the clone on a set A is a, a class C of operations on A, uh, that contains all projections on A, and uh, the composition of uh, C with itself is contained in C. And uh, we're going to denote uh, like this, F in angle brackets, uh, the clone generated by uh, the set F. So the least clone containing uh, the given set F functions. Of course, uh, clones are a very uh, well-known concept in universal algebra. And in particular, the clones on the two elements that are very well-known, they were described by Emil Post, uh, and uh, they form uh, this famous lattice, the Post's lattice. Uh, um, OK, we are going to see uh, this lattice uh, many times during this talk. Uh, what else can we do with uh, function class composition? Uh, the key notion here in this talk is the, the notion of uh, stability of a, a function class under left and right composition with a clone. So let K be a class of functions from A to B, and let C1 and C2 be clones on these two sets, A and B, respectively. We say that uh, the set K is stable under right composition with the clone C1 if the composition of K with C1 from the right is contained in K. Similarly, K is stable under left composition with the clone C2 if the composition C2 from the left with K is contained in K. And if K is both stable under right composition with C1 and stable under left composition with C2, we call K a C1, C2 clonoid or a C1, C2 stable class. Here we assume that C1 and C2 are clones on the two sets, but this is not really a significant restriction because if we took uh, any sets uh, k1 and k2 of uh, operations on the two sets a and b, k1, k2 stability is equivalent to uh, the stability where we take the clones generated by k1 and k2 as these parameters. So we can really uh, restrict ourselves uh, to the case when c1 and c2 are clones. Okay. So um, certain special cases of these C1, C2 clonoids uh, are encountered in the literature. Uh, so for example, when both clones are the clones of projections, then what we get are just the, the so-called minor closed classes 
for millions. I mean, stability on, uh, on, of, under the right composition with the, the clone of projections means that we can form minors of functions and stability under uh, left composition with clone of projections means nothing. So this is really just the, the minor closed classes. Um, if we take C1 to be the clone of projections, that is, we get minor closed classes, and C2 is then an arbitrary clone, then we get something that uh, is or was called clonoids uh, uh, by uh, Erhard Eichinger and Peter Meyer. Um, it is in this paper quoted here. And the special case when C2 is the clone of projections, so this means really nothing, and C1 is an arbitrary clone, then we get something that I would call a C1 minor closed classes. So we can kind of compose uh, functions from the inside with members of uh, uh, our clone C1. Okay, but uh, in general, the clones C1 and C2 can be uh, any clones, and we get a notion of a C1, C2 clonoid for a fixed pair of clones C1 and C2. So what can we say about uh, such C1, C2 clonoids? So first of all, we can say that uh, uh, the C1, C2 clonoids constitute a closure system. That is the set of all functions itself is a C1, C2 clonoid. And intersections of C1, C2 clonoids are again C1, C2 clonoids. And since we have a closure system, then we have a closure operator and actually the the closure of a set F of functions can be described quite nicely. So the least C1, C2 clonoid containing a set F is given by this uh, uh, composition of function classes, C2 composed with the composition of F and C1. Here it is important that we put the brackets uh, uh, in, in this way because the Composition of function classes is not associative, as was shown by Oseira and Holmes. And furthermore, uh, uh, they showed that uh, this inclusion always holds. So if we put the brackets here on the left, this set will be contained in the set composition where we put the brackets on the right. And this inclusion holds as an equality if the set F in the middle is a minion or a minor closed set. This is the so-called associativity lemma of Coursera and Holmes. Okay. Now, let me get back to some, some uh, notions from our theory of clones or, or rather uh, theory of uh, polymorphisms and invariant relations. So this is a well-known uh, result from clone theory. So um, we say that a function or operation F on a set A preserves a relation R on the same set. Uh, if this condition holds, so we take um, any matrix whose columns are tuples from the relation R, and we apply F to the rows of the matrix like this, the resulting tuple will again be uh, in the relation R. And if this always happens, then we say that F preserves R, or that F is a polymorphism or R, or R is an invariant of F. And now this uh, uh, preservation relation, as usual, induces a Galois connection between functions and relations. Uh, so we have the polymorphisms of a set of relations or the invariance of a set of functions. And uh, it is well known that uh, the closed sets of functions under this Galois connection are precisely the locally closed clones. In a similar way, um, we can describe um, minions. But now, instead of uh, uh, preserving a single relation, we need to uh, take a pair of relations. 
so if we consider functions from A to B, we need to take a relation on A and another relation on B of the same arity. And we say that F preserves this pair of relations RS uh, if a similar condition holds. So now we take any matrix whose columns are tuples from the first relation, we apply F to the rows, and the resulting tuple must be a tuple in the second relation S. And if this holds for all such matrices, we say that F preserves this relation pair RS. And again, we get uh, the Galois connection induced by this preservation relation. And uh, it was shown by Pippinger that uh, the Galois closed sets of uh, functions are precisely the, the uh, minions. And it was extended by Coursera and Follis for uh, arbitrary possibly infinite sets. So then we get the local closure condition as well. Okay, how about uh, the C1, C2 clonoids? C1, C2 clonoids are minor closed. Uh, so, so according to this result of Pippinger and Coser and Foldus, we should be able to describe each C1, C2 clonoid with the help of a relation pair or a set of relation pairs. But what kind of relation pairs we need? And this question was uh, clarified by Coser and Foldus. So they showed that uh, um, the locally closed C1, C2 clonoids are precisely those sets of functions that are definable by, or are those uh, sets of polymorphisms of uh, relation pairs where the two relations are invariants of the two clones uh, we have fixed here C1 and C2. So R is an invariant of C1 and S is an invariant of C2. So with relation pairs of this form, we can describe all C1, C2 clonoids. All right. So these are uh, very general uh, results regarding uh, the, the C1, C2 clonoids. Um, so what I'm now going to uh, explain in this talk is a, a bit more concrete. Uh, I would somehow like to, to describe exactly what the C1, C2 clonoids are. A bit, a bit in the same way as uh, in clone theory, we are interested in what the clones on the, the set A are. The clones were completely described on the two element sets, so perhaps uh, um, a reasonable first uh, step towards this uh, aim would be to, to look at uh, the clonoids on the two element set, when both A and B are two element set. And um, a very uh, good starting point uh, to this goal was provided uh, by uh, a result by Sparks, uh, uh, who considered uh, the cardinality of the lattice of uh, C1, C2 clonoids in the special case when, um, first of all, the two sets are finite, uh, the first set uh, has at least two elements, the second set is the two element set, and on the first set we have the clone of projections, and then on the two element set, the second set, we have an arbitrary clone. And uh, she classified uh, the clones uh, on the two element set according to the cardinality of the lattice of the, uh, these JAC clonoids. So JA is the clone of projections on A, C is a, a, a clone of uh, Boolean functions. And uh, uh, this classification um, gives uh, three possible uh, cases. Uh, so the lattice of clonoids will be either finite, countably infinite, or it has the cardinality of the continuum. And this only depends on whether the clone C contains or does not contain a near unanimity operation, a multi-sub operation. Yeah, right. 
So the description is given here, but uh, maybe this can be also presented uh, more visually by, with the help of the post lattice. So recall, um, so the first clone is always the, always the clone of projections on A, and the second clone is now one of the clones on the two elements, set, and they are the clones here in the post lattice. So the lattice is partitioned into these three uh, blocks. Uh, if the clone belongs to the green part, then <clears throat> the corresponding lattice of clonoids is a finite lattice. If the clone belongs to the yellow part, then uh, the lattice is uh, countably infinite. And for the clones in the red part, we get an uncountable uh, lattice of uh, clonoids. So now, uh, my goal was to get a bit more a better understanding of uh, the, the C1, C2 clonoid lattices. So, so Sparks' theorem only gave the cardinality of that lattice. It gave no information about the structure of that lattice, let alone what the, the clonoids themselves are. And uh, this was uh, my goal a few years ago when, when I started to, to think about this problem. And uh, the first uh, step I took with Miguel Coseiro, we, we focused on this yellow part. So these are the clones of the various clones of uh, linear functions. So the, the clone that is shown here, this L01, it is the clone of um, the um, idempotent or constant preserving linear functions. This is the clone generated by the, the triple sum. And uh, we were able to uh, describe completely all the corresponding C1, C2 clonoids or, or J, A, L, 0, 1 clonoids. And uh, the description uh, is the following. So we can first of all determine that these classes that are defined here and that form this poset here are uh, such uh, JA L01 clonoids. So we have the clone omega of all Boolean functions. Then we have these classes uh, uh, that are um, given by the condition that the value of the constant zero tuple is A or this class where uh, the value of the all one tuple is B. And then we have the intersection of such classes. Omega equal is the set of those functions where the constant tuples take same values. And the omega uh, not equal is where the constant tuples take opposite values. So we get uh, these uh, um, 11 such classes that form this poset. There are more uh, classes or more uh, clonoids in this case um, that can be described with the help of um, the um, multilinear polynomial representation, representation of the Boolean functions or the so-called Zhigalkin polynomials. So every Boolean function uh, is uh, presented by a unique Zhigalkin polynomial. And the degree of uh, that polynomial would be called the degree of uh, the function. And uh, we would also call the characteristic rank of the function, the degree of uh, a related function, which is obtained by taking first the sum of uh, the function f and its uh, so-called inner negation, where we just negate uh, the arguments. And for some reason, we add uh, one to this degree. And now with the help of the degree and the characteristic rank of the function, we can define some further classes. And for each um, natural number i and j, we define these uh, sets of functions of bounded degree. Degree is bounded by i. And here, this is the set of uh, all functions whose characteristic rank is bounded by j. 
And we can also show that uh, each such plus di and xj is also the j l01 toroid. Uh, what is the meaning of this characteristic rank? Uh, uh, this is somehow a generalization of the property of reflexivity or uh, self-duality. Selesneva uh, and Buchmann uh, showed that the Boolean function is reflexive if and only if its characteristic rank is zero. And uh, we have also these characterizations of self-duality and reflexivity. So it's related to, to this characteristic rank. Okay. So now if you put everything together, so if you take all the these classes that we defined, so in this diagram on the top, we have those uh, 11 posets that we first defined. And then when we intersect these with uh, the classes di of bounded polynomial degree and the xj of uh, bounded uh, characteristic rank, we will obtain this uh, countable countably infinite lattice. So this green poset is kind of uh, copies of it appear in this uh, lattice uh, many times. Um, on the bottom, we have uh, some extra classes like the empty set and the constant functions and both constants. So there is a countably infinite number of uh, such planoids as predicted by uh, the, re the result of sparks. Uh, and they are completely described here. Of course, uh, we should prove that these are indeed the classes, and the proof has two parts. First of all, the first part is to show that uh, all these classes are clonoids. This is mainly a straightforward verification, and it is sufficient to verify this for the, the classes that we defined here because then everything else in this diagram we get as intersections of those classes and intersections of clonoids are again clonoids. The second, the more difficult part of the proof, ah, this is this we explained here, is to show that there are no further uh, clonoids than the ones given here. And uh, this we can do by showing that uh, each set of uh, Boolean functions must generate one of uh, the classes uh, uh, described here. And this we can do if we consider each of those classes and we take any subset of that class that is not contained in any of its uh, proper uh, subclasses or equivalent in any of its lower covers then this set must generate the given class. So this is the more difficult part of the, 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 the proof. I'm not going to go to the details in, in this talk. All right. So this is how we described uh, um, the clonoids that uh, uh, arise from the linear functions. And uh, of course, once we have uh, described the ones uh, corresponding to this clone, we can all also get the, for the super clones uh, because of the monotonicity property of the function plus composition. It follows that the if you take any super clone of this L01, the corresponding clonoids must be included in, or they must be among those clonoids that we have described. So then it is just a matter of, uh, of identifying which clonoids correspond to the super clones. Okay, so that's, uh, that's about the linear clono, uh, clone. Then moving to this uh, green part where we should obtain finite uh, clonoid lattices. We could focus on this minimal uh, element of this green part, the clone SM of the self-dual monotone functions. So this would be the clone generated by the, the 
ternary uh, majority function. And these uh, conoids can also be quite easily described and uh, they are obtained uh, uh, from these classes that are uh, listed here. So we have some of the familiar classes or the, the classes that we already defined, class of all functions. Then we have uh, omega less than or equal. So this would be the set of functions that for where the value of at the all zero tuple is less than or equal to the value at the all one tuple. And similarly for the greater than or equal, these we have already defined and we take some unions of those classes. C denotes the class of constant functions. We take some unions of the previous. Then we have uh, the set of all minorants of self-dual functions, majorants of self-dual functions, monotone, antitone functions. Then we have these, uh, these are actually clones, the U2, W2, these are the clones of uh, these one separating functions of rank two and zero separating functions of two, of rank two. And the classes of all negations of such functions for U2 and W2, and R is the set of all reflexive functions. So these classes can be shown to be uh, JSM clonoids. And then we, by taking all the possible intersections of these classes, we get uh, some uh, further clonoids. And what we obtain is this nice lattice of 93 clonoids. And uh, this is all the, the J SM clonoids. And again, the proof goes along the same lines, uh, showing first that uh, these are indeed clonoids, and secondly, that there are no further clonoids. And as predicted by uh, Sparks, this lattice is finite with 93 elements. OK. And in the same way, if we, we started with uh, the clonoid clone SM, then we can relatively easily also determine the clonoids uh, corresponding to each superclone of SM. So we get almost everything uh, from this green part, except for these um, infinite chains on the two sides of this lattice. So now, what can we say about uh, the clonoids corresponding to these clones? Um, of course, this uh, so, so this U two would be that uh, clone of um, one separating functions of rank two, and uh, this we can describe uh, with the help of uh, uh, the description of the clonoids corresponding to the clone SM. But if we go down, then we need to find, find them. So let's perhaps focus now on, on the clones right here. So this would be the, the monotone and constant preserving uh, functions that are two separating of rank K. So here we have this parameter K for each integer at least two. Uh, when k is two, we can actually find uh, the, the clonoid lattice. And it is shown here. The, this can be uh, determined just by looking at the description of those self dual monotone clones and, and uh, the clonoids and identifying which ones of them are uh, clonoids with respect to the, the clone. M U two zero one, and now if we increase this uh, parameter two to a bigger uh, integer, the clonoids we obtain, all these classes should be uh, also clonoids for the arbitrary k, but there should be some further classes. And now the question is, what are those uh, new clonoids when k is greater than two? 
Ah, okay, so this question was posed here. And uh, the key notion to describing uh, the, the such clonoids is uh, that of a minor rent of a function. So we say that uh, a Boolean function f is a minor rent of a Boolean function g, or that g is a major rent of f, if f is pointwise less than or equal to g. And then we can consider the so-called minor and minor relation, which we define as the transitive closure of the union of the minor and relation that we defined just here and the minor relation. The transitive closure of the union of the minor and, and minor relation. This relation is a, a transitive and reflexive relation that is a quasi-order, and uh, we would call any downset of uh, this uh, quasi-order a minor rent minimum. So indeed, uh, any minor rent minion is indeed a minion. It is a minor closed class uh, because it's closed undertaking minors, but it is also closed undertaking minor rents. So what can we say about this minor and minor relation? Well, the first thing we can say is that uh, this is uh, actually just the relational composition of the minor and relation and the minor relation. So we can always just relate the, or take these relations in this order. But unfortunately, understand this uh, minor and uh, minor relation very well. If you take the, the um, partial order, there are a few facts I can, I can say about this uh, uh, minor and minor partial order. The poset has a least element, which is uh, the constant zero function. It has a greatest element, which is the constant one function. There is one atom, which is the negation of the implication function. And uh, there are these infinite ascending chains corresponding to the disjunctions of n variables. And the other uh, ascending chain corresponds to the negated conjunctions of n variables. There, there are also infinite antichains, such as uh, uh, the family of these functions, fn. fn has arity n, and it takes value 1, precisely when uh, the Hamming weight of the, the input n tuple is n, either 1 or n minus 1. And we can also show that uh, every Boolean function is below uh, one of the elements in these two infinite ascending chains. There are no uh, co-atoms in this lattice. Row. So this is just a schematic uh, diagram of this minor and minor poset. And the downsets of this poset are the uh, minor and minions. Another key notion uh, towards the description of those uh, clonoids is that of uh, L local closure. So let uh, theta be a set of uh, Boolean functions and let L be a natural number or infinity. We say that the L local closure of uh, theta is the set of all those Boolean functions F for which the following holds. For every subset S of the domain of F of size at most L, there exists a 
a function g in theta whose restriction to the subset s coincides with the restriction of f to s. And uh, this L local closure is uh, indeed a closure operator on the set of all functions for each uh, number. And uh, we can also show that uh, the L local closures of minor and minions are again minor and minions. So then it makes sense to speak about L locally closed minor and minions. Okay, maybe I skip this. This gives uh, another kind of uh, uh, description of these L locally closed uh, minor and minions. Uh, but perhaps what I uh, take here is this uh, uh, notation that uh, I would rather use for the L local closure of, uh, 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 of a set of uh, Boolean functions. So this UL theta would denote uh, the L local closure of the minor and minion generated by theta. Okay. And um, now uh, we obtain more uh, J MUK01 clonoids by taking such L locally closed minor and minions. Whenever uh, this parameter L is uh, less than or equal to K, and K is at least two, uh, this class UL theta is uh, a JMUK01 clonoid. This we can show. And uh, in fact, uh, Many of the, the, uh, the functional classes that we have seen so far are actually of this form. They are L local closures of uh, some, or some L locally closed minor and minions. And here are some examples. Uh, um, so, um, the following um, observations will help us uh, uh, to systematically study the L locally closed uh, minor and minions that give us uh, um, J M U K zero one clonoids. So for for this parameter k, um, so what we can do. Uh, let us first uh, uh, define this class. So, so this is the class of uh, all Boolean functions that have um, at most L true points. True points, I mean, points taking value one. So the pre-image of one has at most L elements. Um, the first uh, lemma that will help us uh, uh, study uh, the, the clonoids is that uh, we can actually, so, so the, the first result was that each set of the form UL theta, where L is at most K, is a clonoid that we are interested in. But in fact, we can take this parameter L to be equal to K. And moreover, um, we can take as the generator of the um, minor and minor the set psi of Boolean functions with at most k true points. So these restrictions narrow down the, the form of the uh, function classes that we need to consider. The second uh, result, uh, um, so now that we are interested only in, in uh, these k locally closed uh, minor and minions, the sets of this form, uk theta, for some set theta, they constitute a lattice 
that is isomorphic to the lattice of ideals of uh, the minor and minor order when restricted to functions of with at most k group points. So let's illustrate this. Uh, so, so if you take small uh, values of k, what can we get? So when k is one, we are looking at uh, Boolean functions with at most one true point. There are very few such functions, namely the constant zero function, the negated implication, uh, the identity function, and the negation. They form this four element poset, uh, and this is ordered by the minor and minor relation. And the lattice of ideals of this poset is shown here. It has uh, just six elements. And each uh, ideal or each element of this poset corresponds to one, one locally closed uh, minor and median. We can do the same for k equal to two. So here are the Boolean functions with at most two true points. And the lattice of ideals of this uh, poset is shown here. And each such ideal, each element of this lattice corresponds to uh, two locally closed minor and minion. When k is equal to three, this is the lattice of uh, the sorry the poset of uh, um, Boolean functions with at most three true points, and uh, we can then take the lattice of ideals of this poset, and each uh, such ideal corresponds to uh, three locally closed uh, minor and median. The ideal lattice of uh, this poset is a bit too large to, to draw here. It has uh, 2,800 and something elements. Uh, but uh, yeah, after this three things get a bit too large to, to represent. So I, I really don't have an idea what is happening with larger parameters. Anyways, um, so, so so this gives an idea uh, how how we can get uh, uh, these clonoids corresponding to, to these uh, clones of MUK01. But there are also clonoids that are not of this form, that are not K locally closed minor and minions. And uh, such classes are, uh, for example, in the classes listed here, all Boolean functions. And then we have also the classes we already defined uh, related to the values at the constant tuples, the monotone functions, the anti monotone functions, the reflexive functions. All right, here we had uh, those classes together with. All constants. So these are also uh, uh, MUK01 clonoids. And we can then also take intersections of uh, all these classes that we have defined here. So if we do this, maybe I skip this, uh, we obtain the lattice of all. Uh, uh, the clonoids. This is uh, just a schematical diagram of the, the lattice. Uh, um, the yellow part here, this constitutes uh, all the k locally closed minor and minions. These are indeed uh, clonoids as, as uh, we explained here. And we, when we take 
and and then then we have here uh, outside of this yellow part we have these uh, kind of uh, unhighlighted uh, clones uh, these would always be the same uh, regardless of the, the value of the parameter k and when we take the intersections uh, of the yellow, uh, the, the, the clonoids in the yellow part and uh, these uh, unhighlighted parts, uh, then we get some, something new. And it is these uh, uh, blue, red, and green parts. So roughly what is uh, happening here, um, so the green part, these are, um, what we obtain when we intersect some of these uh, uh, yellow uh, uh, clonoids with uh, reflexive functions, we get some uh, subposet here, and there is an isomorphic copy of this uh, somewhere in this yellow part. Um, here we have what is here the, the constant preserving functions and all constants. And when we intersect uh, the yellow um, clonoids with this, we obtain the classes right here. And there is an isomorphic copy also in the yellow part. Here, what is this? This is the constant preserving and constant one functions. So this is also an isomorphic uh, copy. And here we have the monotone functions and monotone one preserving functions. And an isomorphic copies of uh, these can be found somewhere here. It is inside the, the, the blue part. And similarly for the constant reversing functions and the anti-monotone functions. So this is a, a schematical diagram of the, the uh, poset of the JMUK01 clonoids. And uh, unfortunately, I cannot provide a more explicit description of uh, the class. It depends on um, the description of these um, K locally closed minor and minions. Uh, and, uh, in order to understand this, we should understand the minor and minor bosons. And here is still a list of those classes uh, more explicitly. OK, so now there are several um, open problems uh, or further directions for my work. Uh, um, first of all, in order to understand what I explained here about this, uh, uh, the, the last part of this talk, it would be helpful to understand better uh, this minor and minor posets uh, and its uh, ideals. Uh, maybe this poset uh, could be of interest in its own right as well. Um, so, because the, the classes are not explicitly described here, also the exact cardinality of uh, uh, these lattice of uh, these clonoids are, are not known exactly. They will be finite uh, as predicted by uh, sparks, but what are exactly the cardinalities, I don't know. Also here, uh, the first uh, clone, uh, C1 was fixed to be uh, the clone of projections, but we could take as the first clone also uh, a bigger clone, and uh, which uh, clonoids do we obtain then? They will be among uh, the, the clonoids described here, but uh, this gives us some, some additional conditions that they must satisfy. Uh, I, I, I don't know exactly. Um, moving further, we could also look at, uh, if, I, if I may go back to this uh, diagram. Okay. So this gave us now a description 
of the green part of the post uh, lattice and also the yellow part was uh, described. So we, we had uh, the countably infinite and finite uh, clonoid lattices. We might also look at uh, the red part of this lattice, but then the clonoid lattice uh, would be uncountably infinite. And then it may not be feasible to obtain any uh, explicit description of the, the uh, corresponding clonoids. But perhaps something could still be said about uh, the, the clonoids, even in that case. Uh, um, and perhaps what might be interesting is uh, still to, to try to extend uh, Sparks' theorem on, on the cardinality of the, the clonoid lattices uh, in, in, in the sense that if we take as the first clone instead of the clone of projections, we take also an arbitrary clone of Boolean functions, and we would uh, try to determine at least the cardinality of the uh, resulting uh, clonoid lattice. And of course, another uh, possible direction is to generalize uh, this work. This was all about uh, Boolean functions. Maybe this could be somehow generalized to, to the clonoids on arbitrary finite sets. So I will conclude this talk uh, with uh, references to the three papers on which this talk was based. Uh, they are all available on, on the archive. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. I will be happy to answer your questions.